Hey everybody, happy Monday. Happy Monday everyone. Glad you are here. Today's video, we are going to be talking about species only tanks versus community tanks. And if you've never explored this topic before, this is something to think about because there are some very clear advantages and disadvantages to both. Hope you enjoy the video. All right, so I think before we really get too far into this though, we do have to define what we mean by community tank and species only tank. The community tank is the typical tank that you would see as a picture on the, on the, oh, I just bought this tank on the box. Or a lot of times when you go on YouTube, you just kind of think of your stereotypical tank. A community tank is one in which all the fish in that tank generally get along. They have the pretty much the same behavioral characteristics. For the most part, the same water parameter requirements, feeding requirements. But these are multiple species that you're going to keep together. A lot of our stocking options videos that we've done in the description below center around that. Now, the species only tank, for the most part, as the name implies, you're putting pretty much one species in a tank. So examples, in our fish room, we've got our shell dweller species only tanks like our Maltese and our Similis. The advantage there, we'll go over in a minute, but you don't always have to have just one species. Maybe you've got a bristlenose pleco in there or some type of a small cleanup crew in addition. All right, I say that we start off with the pros and cons of the community tank. Who doesn't love a community tank? It'd be a lot of fun. One of the biggest pros for that, I would say, is, well, the obvious pro would be variety. You're going to get a lot of different variety of colors, shapes, sizes, all that good stuff in one single tank. But not only are you going to get all of those different colors, shapes, and sizes, potentially, you may also get a lot of different personalities in that tank. That can be both a pro and a con because you also have to manage all of those different personalities. And often we've done a million videos on stocking options. Check them out in the description below. But this is often something that people really wanna spend some time talking about. So when it comes to the community tank, you do have lots of personalities that can be good because you can have some fish that are more mellow, some are a little bit more active. At the same time, you can have fish that are a little bit more aggressive compared to those that maybe are a little bit more docile. So you get a large variety with your community tank. Now, another big, huge pro for me is, well, it's going shopping you get a whole lot more shopping time because you're picking out different species as opposed to if you just do a species only, you're gonna pick that species, maybe pick the ones that you want out of the tank and, and then you're done. If, if you have a whole bunch of different species in there, oh, that's a good afternoon of shopping. Absolutely, there's nothing more fun than going to the pet store and filling up a few bags of different fish, which is pretty cool. The other thing to consider is not only do you get that variety we've been talking about so far, but you get, it's a little bit easier to fill up the different parts of a tank. This can be especially important as you get into larger tanks, let's say 29 gallons or above, you might want some of those fish that are gonna stay near the bottom, mid-level fish, top-level fish, and with that community tank, that gives you the ability to do that. Now with the community tank, I think some people would argue that it might just be a more interesting tank to look at because of the variety of shapes and sizes and different colors and different species of fish. And not only that, I think a lot of people would say it might be more interesting to look at, but it is also more common. I think most of us, when we get into the fish keeping hobby, just assume that our fish tanks are going to look a lot like the fish tank picture on the box right. of your favorite fish tank manufacturer, or you go on the internet and you see all these cool fish swimming around, like a lot of the ones we've got throughout our fish room. And that can be a really interesting thing, which also makes it a lot more common. Now let's hop on over to the species only. And what are the pros and cons for that? I would say a big pro for that would be managing water parameters. When you're doing it for a species only tank, you are looking at one species to help determine your water hardness, your pH, and your temperature. And that is one of the big advantages with that species only tank. When you've only got one type of fish in the tank, you only have to worry about their requirements for water hardness, pH, and temperature. One of the big questions we get is, oh, can you keep these fish together based on their di different water parameters? And often fish are kept together from different continents, different areas where the water parameters might differ. That might put some stress on certain fish, but with the species only, there's only one species to worry about. I think another thing to consider too is behavior. Fish will often show their 
most natural behavior when they are in a group, provided they can be kept in a group. So I'm thinking about your schooling fish, a lot of your tetras, your rasboras. A lot of our cichlids that are in species only tanks act a certain way when they're in a group amongst their own kind, where you wouldn't necessarily get to see that behavior if you kept them individually, where they might wind up very shy, reclusive, or maybe even aggressive because they're only being kept as a single specimen. Now another benefit for having a species only tank would be your ease of feeding. You're not going to have as much food competition as you might if you have a community tank and you're trying to balance all the different kinds of feeding behaviors to do some of them eat quicker, do they eat at the top versus the bottom, and so you're just really managing that one species when you're feeding them. And not only that, these species only tank the fish are going to require basically the same food type so i'm thinking let's say you mixed a bunch of african cichlids with south and central american cichlids you would have differences in water parameters which could be an issue like we've already talked about certainly differences in their nutritional requirements which could be actually be an even bigger issue but let's say we're just keeping in buna species together or just keeping yellow labs they basically have the same water parameter requirements like we mentioned already, but their feeding requirements are also the same, which is a big bonus, which is gonna allow you to give the fish the best of what they need. Another thing to consider is breeding. A lot of fish will breed better when they're in a group amongst themselves. I'm thinking particularly we breed a lot of shell dwellers. When we put shell dwellers in a Lake Tanganyikan community tank, we very rarely ever see fry because the other fish generally eat these very tiny little babies. However, when we put certain shell dwellers in species only tanks, we get a lot of fry survival as you've seen over the years in our multi shell dweller tank and our similar shell dweller tank, we get a lot of survival and that wouldn't happen if we were in a mixed tank with other species. Another benefit keeping a species only tank is for, for us aquascapers, when you're trying to decide, say you want an actual biotope for your fish, it's going to be a whole lot easier for you to do your research and look at uh, images to inspire your aquascape if you're looking at a single species. And then you can keep it very straightforward. One species, one biotope. Something else to consider too is how striking a species only tank can appear. I'll give you an example. Let's say you had a 55 gallon mixed community tank. That can be a lot of fun to put together. You might have some smaller garamis and some tetras and some cherry barbs and panda cories and all kinds of different fish swimming around. But that same tank might look just as cool, maybe better for some, if you had a hundred neon tetras in there or you had a couple hundred galaxy rasboras. So don't underestimate how amazing a species only tank can look. Now one thing to keep in mind, if you do want a species only tank and you really like the look of that, it's gonna be giving you a whole lot of impact and you say, yeah, I want that. Keep in mind, there are some species that you cannot do a species only tank. I'm looking at you, the flower horn, male bettas, Maybe, let's see, what else we have? Oh, I don't know, the red tail shark, the rainbow shark. These are fish where you can keep them in a species only tank as long as there's only one of them in that tank and it's the appropriate size. But there are some fish where they're going to be a lot worse off if you try to keep multiples together. Just keep that in mind. All right, everyone, those are just some things to consider when you are thinking about doing a new tank, putting one together. Don't overlook the species only tank. I know for some it can sound boring, like, oh, I don't want a tank full of just one fish, <laughs> but it can be cool, it can be rewarding, it can increase the likelihood of their breeding. If you want more information on some stocking options, check out the videos down in the description below. Appreciate you being here and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. I think it's an interesting concept to ex concept? Con concept? Concept. Concept. It would be concept. Consent. Concept. Cons consent. Wait. But can I say that word? Hold on, I'm freaking out. Consent. Cons concept. 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 I can say that word every other day of the week, except for today. Concept. Okay, let's start over.